Now, in this video, I want to look very quickly at the freehand drawing tool, Fill. And we've got all these choices here. I was going to do a design, but it takes me too long, and I've got a bevy of bodies arriving any minute now. And I also want to cover the cutwork tool in this. I'm going to choose the freehand radial fill, partly because it's one of my favourites, and partly because time is very tight. My smoothing is on 44. I want to increase that a little because I'm just going to make a large, simple shape, 63. And I'm going to start here and do <laughs> an arc. Well, it's meant to be an arc. But I'm rushing. There we go. There's my freehand shape. It looks a wee bit nasty. Let me just drop that down a little bit. So I highlight it, I go into Object Details, I go to Radial Fill, and I tell it, I don't want your horrible pattern, thank you. I want my fill stitch to be a weave fill. Quite a big shape, and it's not a good idea to use satin on a big shape. I'm also going to open up my stitch spacing, which is our density setting. It gets confusing when Different programs use different terms, but your stitch spacing refers to the distance between two forward rows of stitching, not the return row. Okay, I'm going to leave that on 4, and I'm going to up this one to 150. And I'm going to tell this, travel on edge, close that. Now it's opened it up, it's still highlighted, so I remove the underlay. I go back into travel on edge edge. Thank you. Now those runs have gone. Now I'm going to go into Object Reshape and I'm going to move that center point down here. So I've got the equivalent of a cam shell. Clam shell, Maggie. I'm going to put a round node in here, bring it down to about there. So as I've got a similar shape both sides, I'm going to change this one to a square much better clam shape. And I'm going to put my start and my end points down here. So if I wanted, and I'm going to increase this to the 200 by 200 hoop, stop that, highlight it, move it so as it sits just above the center, and tell it, give me four of them. Tell that OK. Tell that stop. Move this one up a touch, or maybe I need to come over a touch. I hadn't quite got it centred. No big deal. What I'm really trying to show you is how much freedom you've got with this freehand tool. And the fact you can use... Oh dear, I did get that way off, didn't I? So let's try and get this dead on centre. It would help if I brought it to centre first. This is what happens when you rush. Highlight it, move it up. And I'm using my directional arrow keys. That's better. There we go. Nice simple shape, nice effect. And I did it using the freehand fill. I know I'm rushing, but if I don't rush, I won't get this done. I'm going to delete all those. And I want to show you what your cutwork tool, if you get the plugin, can do for you. Now, if you look up here, you'll see you've got a legend here, a pictorial legend here. Then you've got embroidery. Then you've got cutting line. And you've got a distance. And that distance, <laughs> I wish I had two mice here now. Watch this. I want to come down onto distance. Watch the two lines that appear. Okay, one millimeter cut. All right, that's using the single run line. I want to do some applique. So I click on no embroidery. Now all I've got is my cut. So I'm just going to do, not much of a circle, is it? I'm not very good at drawing circles. There we go. That's a hole. I've cut my applique fabric. So when I do my applique design, I repeat that shape, I stitch it, 
on the background fabric to tell me where my placement is and then I can stick this one down and I can just continue with my applique design and I've got a perfectly cut shape to include in my applique design. I think it's fantastic. Now I want to show you still using the same shape so I'm going to highlight that. I can use the satin line and I've got the netting the net fill in the background but I don't like that net fill. Oh, the gaps are too big. So I'm going to reset that size. I also don't like the zero degree. So I'm going to set that for 45. And look, I've got a netting background. Just how simple is that? It really is fantastic. If I didn't want satin line and I only wanted single run line, I'll choose this one. There you go. If I come out of visualizer, there's my cutting line. That's my inner stabilizing line. It's my outer. And I can go all the way through changing these to see how it looks. Now you really can't see much change occurring here. I'll go into the candle wicking line. There you go. The stem stitch, the back stitch, the motif. I haven't found a way yet to change the motif line in here. I've got to find out how I can change the motif line. There has to be a way. Personally, because I'm me, <laughs> I would just cut the hole. Then I would do my own stabilizing, because I'm me, and I would probably use my freehand tool for this. Enter that, go into reshape, and just tidy this up generally. But your cut work function works out for you where your stabilizing run goes and everything else. And this is what I would use for attaching my stabilizer, water soluble. I would place mine on top. I know the general consensus is you place it behind. I'm a wee bit contrary and I like doing it my way. Then I could go and I could choose, well, let's go for turning angle tool. And because I've got my water soluble, just put my own satin line around it. Because there's no law says I have to follow slavishly what the tool dictates to me. And of course I'd want to use an image. But you get the general idea. I hope. And tell that enter. I'm not going to go all the way around. So I've got a hole with a frame around it. Now, in between, if I wanted, I can do my own Richelieu bars. And then come down that with an open satin. Highlight it. Object reshape. Pop that down to there. Make that 0.5. Because it's never actually 0.5. There you go. That's my reinforcement line. Click off that. And then come back up with my satin cover. And set that one for 1.2 minimum. A lot of programs, if you go too low, and I don't like mine up at 100%, and I've got a Richelieu bar, and of course I could put more in. My shape could have been the big swoosh with the Richelieu bars going across. Then I could put in my outline. Line stitch. Three point five. Thank you. Okay. Reshape it because I'm way off beam there. And of course. I don't digitize in simulator stitch mode. I'm only doing it now because I want you to see. And the visualizer gives you a better picture. I digitize this way. It looks like I've got a belt buckle. But you can see, if you like cut work, 
just how easy the cutwork tool makes it for you. Now, if you buy the plugin and you're not really interested in these, the freehand tools, and I think they are fantastic. I mean, for normal digitizing, for line drawing, which is my forte, and for, well, for any style of digitizing. And you still have the full power of your Jan editing, your reshaping, your stitch settings, your stitch types. I know I'll be saving my pennies to get the upgrade, and I think I'd have to continue saving to get the plug-in later. But at the moment, the plug-in would be no good to me because my little Janome machine is kaput, and I'm saving up for a new domestic embroidery machine. Well, that's going to take me a little while. Now, I'm showing you all these because I think MBX is already a fantastic program. With these in, I think it's a brilliant program. And I'm going to tell you again, I'm not a Jan employee. Uh, sorry, a Janome employee. I'm not a salesman. I'm an end user. I'm a wrinkly end user. That means I'm old. I have a limited income. That means I'm very careful where I spend my pennies. I've got to know I'm getting good value for every one of those pennies. And in my particular case, I think the upgrade and these represent really good value. And I wish I had the money to also buy the plug-in because then I'd be in seventh heaven. Because even though I, I get in the update, the script enabled, ready for the plugin when I get it, and the update comes out end of September, early October, might even be mid-October. So I would get that enabled, but of course I still have to buy the kit. And the kit is the needles, the holder, the CD, um, I can't recall what else, and probably a few ideas and, and patterns. But in here as well is the cutwork manual walking you through a design using the veneer needles using the different options within the tool so as I said in my first video it won't make you an expert but it will take the sting out of learning how to use it so I've got to save my pennies I'm definitely getting it because I love cut work I do cut work the old-fashioned way at the moment and that's digitizing my design, using a scalpel, cutting out the shapes. I don't stick individual teeny bits of water soluble behind the holes I cut, outline the holes that I want to cut. I cut them all in one go, traveling between each one. When I've got them all out, I then use double-sided sticky tape and I stick my water soluble on the back at the moment. And I have experimented with doing it on the front. It works. But you need a decent fabric. It needs to be a nice firm weave to use it on the front. It doesn't have to be such a great fabric to use it on the back. So I hope these little videos that I've done go some way to sharing what I think is a fantastic program and is going to be an absolutely brilliant program with these in. I honestly don't know where the Janome Wilcom software is going to go next. I thought it had reached its pinnacle in version 3. How wrong was I? And this has shown me there's no limit to what these people can do. I know people are going to say, yeah, but it's so expensive. I've looked at the commercial software and believe you me, the price that we are asked for this program, yes. If, like you, you've got a limited income, and no way of supplementing it. It feels expensive, but the current price, and I don't know how much the upgrade is going to cost. I'm not privy to that. The current price of around $1,800 is a darn sight cheaper than the ten to $20,000 you will pay for the commercial version. I've seen a program that I wanted for doing cut work and lace. The very basic and I mean 
very basic program was $5,000. And I thought, no, that's out. I can't cope with that. I can't. There's no way I could manage that. And then to find the cut work in the upgrade, I mean, I've just saved myself $5,000. OK, let's close this. Think about it. Think about what you like to digitize. And please don't be one of these who only auto digitizes. You are missing so much that's in this program. It really is a fantastic program. I love this particular program. And I've just heard the first of the bodies come through my front door. So I'm going to have to close this video now and try and grab an opportunity later today to get it rendered. So I'm going to say goodbye. And thank you for watching these. And I hope I managed to motivate a little bit of passion for your digitizing software.